Real estate math on the exam is intentionally tricky. It tests your ability to solve complex problems hidden in clever wording. In this video, we're tackling 13 challenging math questions. After each question and answer presentation, pause to work through the math before making your choice. And don't miss what's happening in the bottom corner. It's designed to supercharge your exam prep. We'll explain more in just a minute. Let's dive in and get started. Commission and net to seller. Challenging commission scenarios and split calculations. A property is sold for $750,000 with a 6% commission. The listing agent's brokerage takes 50% and the agent has a 70-30 split with their brokerage. After all splits, how much does the listing agent keep? Is it A, $21,000, B, $22,500, C, $18,000, or D, $25,000? The answer is B, $22,500. What makes this one challenging? The question involves multiple splits and unnecessary details. The agent's commission is $22,500. The challenge is understanding the splits correctly and calculating the final amount. Have you noticed the code in the bottom corner? Next time you're stumped, take that code to birdsy.ai for immediate help and a free study session with Birdsy, your personal AI study partner. Plus, you'll get access to hundreds of additional questions, helping you move closer to passing your exam with confidence. The next time you're feeling unsure or stuck, give it a try. A property sells for $800,000 with a 5% commission. The listing agent and buyer's agent agree to split it 50-50. The listing agent's brokerage takes 20% before the split. How much does the listing agent receive? Is it A, $20,000, B, $18,000, C, $16,000, or D, $15,000? The answer is C, $16,000. What makes this one challenging? The tricky part is the order of operations for the brokerage cut and the agent split. The listing agent receives $16,000 after applying the brokerage cut first. Loan and financing calculations. Advanced loan to value and down payment problems. A property is priced at $750,000. The buyer secures an 80% loan-to-value mortgage. If they mistakenly think they need a 25% down payment, what is the actual down payment required? Is it A, $187,500, B, $150,000, C, $200,000, or D, $120,000? The answer is B. $150,000. What makes this one challenging is the common mistake about down payment percentage. The loan covers 80%, so the correct down payment is 20% of $750,000, which is $150,000. Misunderstanding the loan to value ratio can cause confusion. If you're finding this helpful, please take a minute to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more practice exams, useful tips, and complimentary study sessions with Birdsey. Interest and monthly mortgage payment calculations. A homeowner takes out a 30-year fixed rate mortgage for $200,000 with an annual interest rate of 5%. They plan to pay an additional $100 monthly towards the principal. How does this affect the overall loan term? Is it A, the monthly payment will decrease? B, the loan term will decrease? C, the interest rate will decrease? Or D, the total interest paid will increase? The answer is B, the loan term will decrease. What makes this one challenging? The question tests understanding of amortization schedules. Paying extra towards principal reduces the loan term, not the monthly payment. This common misconception can lead to incorrect answers. 
Which of the following would not impact the monthly mortgage payment of a 15-year fixed rate loan? Is it A, interest rate changes, B, loan amount adjustments, C, loan term changes, or D, additional fees? The answer is C, loan term changes. What makes this one challenging? This question uses negative wording, requiring careful reading. Interest rate and loan amount influence payments, but loan term is fixed, making it irrelevant in this context. Prorations and settlement math. Tax and rent proration with uneven dates. A landlord sells a property on June 10th with an annual property tax of $6,000 due on December 31st. The buyer agrees to pay the seller for the prorated taxes. How much does the buyer owe the seller? Is it A, $1,500, B, $2,000, C, $2,630, or D, $3,000? The answer is C, $2,630. What makes this one challenging? The question includes the closing date and tax due date, which can confuse students. The buyer owes for taxes from January to June 10th, calculated as $6,000 divided by 365 days multiplied by 160 days. A tenant moves into an apartment on February 18th and the monthly rent is $1,200. February has 28 days. How much rent does the tenant owe for February? Is it A, $400, B, $471, C, $500, or D, $471.43. The answer is D, $471.43. What makes this one challenging is the uneven month length and mid-month start date. The tenant owes for 11 days based on $1,200 divided by 28 days, then multiplied by 11. Stuck on a question? Just think of the birdsy link in the description as your friendly neighborhood superhero swooping in to save the day with answers. Feel free to explore it now and return to continue. Simply hit pause and we'll be waiting when you get back. Investment and Valuation Math Cap Rate and Net Operating Income Challenges A property has a net operating income of $85,000 and a capitalization rate of 5.5%. If the property is sold for $1,600,000, which of the following statements is true about the valuation? Is it A, the property is undervalued, B, the property is correctly valued, C, the property is overvalued, or D, the cap rate should be adjusted to match the sales price? The answer is C. The property is overvalued. What makes this one challenging is the inclusion of the sales price, which can be misleading. The correct valuation, based on the net operating income and the cap rate, is $1,545,455, not $1,600,000. If a property is valued at $1,200,000 with a capitalization rate of 6%, what should the net operating income be? Which of the following is not a correct calculation of the net operating income? Is it A, $72,000, B, $70,000, C, $74,000, or D, $76,000? The answer is D, $76,000. What makes this one challenging? The use of negative wording can confuse. The correct NOI calculation is $72,000, making any other value incorrect. Depreciation and cost approach adjustments. In the context of the cost approach, which of the following is not a commonly considered factor in determining depreciation of a property? Is it A, physical deterioration, B, functional obsolescence, C, economic improvements, or D, economic obsolescence? The answer is C, economic improvements. What makes this one challenging? The question uses negative wording and similar sounding options. 
physical deterioration and functional obsolescence are well-known factors. However, economic obsolescence is often confused with economic improvements, which are not related to depreciation. Which of the following statements is true regarding the cost approach in real estate appraisal? Is it A, the cost approach never considers land value separately? B, the cost approach involves estimating the cost to construct a similar property. C. Depreciation is only considered in the sales comparison approach. Or D. Market trends are the primary focus of the cost approach. The answer is B. The cost approach involves estimating the cost to construct a similar property. What makes this one challenging? This question includes absolutes and similar sounding options. The cost approach can be complex and often misunderstood. It involves estimating the cost to construct a similar property, not just relying on market trends or depreciation alone. Don't forget to comment below with your tips, challenges, and thoughts on exam preparation. Your experiences can make a big difference for others. Area and measurement conversions. Acreage, lot size and square footage problems. A real estate agent claims a lot is 200 feet by 220 feet. If the agent is correct, which of the following statements is true about the lot size in acres? Is it A, the lot is exactly one acre? B, the lot is less than one acre? C, the lot is more than one acre? Or D, the lot is exactly 0.9 acres? The answer is C. The lot is more than one acre. What makes this one challenging? The question involves converting square footage to acres. Multiply dimensions to get square footage, then divide by 43,560. The correct answer reflects this conversion accurately. A rectangular plot of land measures 80 feet by 150 feet. If the owner claims the plot is exactly 0.3 acres, which of the following statements is true? Is it A, the owner is correct, the plot is exactly 0.3 acres. B, the plot is less than 0.3 acres. C, the plot is more than 0.3 acres. Or D, the plot is exactly 0.25 acres. The answer is C, the plot is more than 0.3 acres. What makes this one challenging? The question tests the conversion between square feet and acres. One acre equals 43,560 square feet. The plot's area is 12,000 square feet, not 0.3 acres, which would be 13,068 square feet. Thanks for joining us today. If you found this video helpful, subscribe to our channel for more practice exams, tips, and tricks. And don't forget to visit birdsey.ai for complimentary study sessions with Birdsey, your AI-powered study partner.